Alright guys, so today I'm actually not going to be the one going over the trick, instead it's going to be the 5th Jack 05. Um, in a few seconds you're going to go ahead and see his performance in his tutorial for tricks, or for the trick he's about to perform. Uh, but anyways guys, uh, like I said a while ago, I love to give exposure to growing channels because I feel like um, it's really hard a lot of times to get traction here on YouTube. So if anybody ever wants to be featured on my channel, uh, don't you know? Don't be afraid to shoot me uh, an email. Uh, the link's going to be in my about tab, and I'll try to go. I'll try my best to go through it and uh, give you guys some feedback, and hopefully you guys can end up on my channel. So, anyways, guys, I'm going to shut up and stop talking, and I'm going to let the fifth jack take over. Um, anyways, guys, here's the video, and I hope you guys like this trick. Do not forget to subscribe. Hey, what is going on, guys? I'm the fifth jack 05, and firstly, I'd like to thank Hester for allowing me to perform in front of such a big audience. Now today you guys will be learning a really cool trick of mine that has both mentalist and transpo effect and without wasting any more time, grab your deck and let's get started. To start off the trick, a spectator is going to pick a random card from the middle of the deck and let's say the spectator chose this card. There we go. And from here, they're going to be asked to divide the packet into three, but equally in size piles. So one, two, three. And normally I would actually get them to pick a pile, but since they're not here, we're going to pick a random pile by being super duper fair, okay? So I'm going to be rolling this dice. And if this dice lands on a one or a two, we're going to say the spectator chose this, this pile. Three or four is going to be for this pile. Five or six is going to be for this pile. That makes sense, right? So here we go. That's number five. So one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to take their card, little reminder of what it was, and we're going to put it right there and square the packets up like so, okay? Now, from here, um, I actually need to pick uh, two different cards, and they are, let's see if I can find them, the two black threes. So there's a three right there. There we go. And there's another three right there. Awesome. And we're just going to square them up. Now you might be wondering why I chose a two black threes, and there's a really good behind. There is a really good reason behind it. It's because um, they are going to tell me what your card was, and where I can find them. For an example, right now the three of clubs is whispering to me that your card is a red card. Like, okay, so it's the three of diamonds. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Now, the secondly, the three of spades is telling me that your card is somewhere in the middle of the deck and maybe, let's see, around 27th place from the middle of the deck, like right here. And there we go, your card, the three of diamonds. Awesome. But not only that, but guess what? The two three, I mean two, uh, yeah, two threes actually met up from the middle of the deck and they actually found your card just like so. Let's see how this card trick is done. Okay, I hope you guys really enjoyed that performance and this is a great routine because it does not require gimmicks, preparation, or any duplicates. So you can use any deck of playing cards and get on with this trick. Now, um, for this video purposes, we're going to say the spectator chose his red back and they chose the queen of hearts, okay? That's their selection. And um, what you're going to do is you're going to approach a spectator and tell them to just pick a card and shuffle the deck, okay? So after they shuffle, let's just say they picked this card just like so, okay? Now, once they pick the card and they hand you back the deck, what you're going to do is you're going to take a peek at the very bottom card really quickly like this and memorize the bottom card. And that's going to be your key card. For this, th this video purposes, we're going to say the Joker is their key card, okay? So at the bottom card like this, Joker is your key card and in your mind you're memorizing the Joker, you're saying Joker, Joker, Joker over and over again, okay? Now, once you've done that, ask the spectator to divide the pack into three piles if you have a spectator who are like really enjoying the trick, okay? Once you've done that, you're going to tell the spectator to put their card on top of any pile they want to. There are three different scenarios that can happen. They can place this card on this pile, this pile, or this pile, okay? Now, what you're going to achieve or what you're going for is you're going to try to get the joker 
on top of the red card, okay? So let's say scenario number one, they pick the rightmost pile. It's super simple. What you're going to do is you're going to place this pile on top of this middle pile, and you're going to make sure that the joker right here remains on the top of this. So take this pile and place it on the top like so. That's scenario number one, that's super easy. If they pick the middle pile, which is scenario number two, what you're going to do is you're going to simply take this pile and place it on the top and take the rest and place it on the top. Super simple, right? Now, scenario three is more complicated, but it's super easy because if they pick this pile and they place their card on the top of this pile, what you're going to do is you're going to tell them to cut the pile into a half and finish the cut just like this. Okay, and you're going to notice that you're, the joker is actually going to end up on the top of the red card. And you're just going to square them up just like so. Now, from here, you're going to know that their joker, I mean, your joker, the key card, is going to be the, on the left side of their card. For an example, right here, joker is on the left side of their card like this. Now, you need an excuse to actually take a peek at their card. So what you're going to do is you're going to say, oh, I forgot, I actually need to pick out two different cards. And you're going to spread the cards. At this moment, you're doing two different things. You're going to locate your key card and then you're going to look at the right side of the card, which is a queen of hearts. Now your new card is the queen of hearts. You're going to make it seem like you memorize their card by saying queen of hearts, queen of hearts, and repeat that in your mind. And from there, you're going to look at the left card of the joker, the king of diamonds. And you're going to say, oh, I actually need the two red kings. And so you're going to start from this end, just move it along. There's a king right there, pick it out like this, keep going. That's their card, Joker, King of Diamonds. It's always a card right beside the Joker. It's always on the left side. It's because um, once you take out the King of Diamonds, you're going to make sure that Joker is going to be down jogged or out jogged, however you wanna say it. So while, while you're taking the King of Diamonds, you're going to just jog it out like this slowly. And with a lot of practice, you're going to notice that it's not a hard move. And then you're going to square them up like so. And you're going to notice that Joker, the key card, is always already sticking out like this. So you're going to carefully take the de take the deck and there's a Joker and obviously I'm exaggerating the break because of the video purposes and you're going to take the thumb and push it up and push it back in like this and grab a pinky break just like so. If you need to watch that again, feel, feel free to go back. While you're doing that, you're just going to say Watch, um, the reason why I picked these two cards is because they are actually going to help me find your card. And all you're doing is while you're saying that is you're going to do a double undercut to bring their card to the top. Now you have a pinky break right here, so you're going to do a simple, simple double undercut just like this so that their card is on the top now. Awesome. Once you've done that, you're going to say, okay, this card, the King of Hearts is whispering to me that your card is a red card and you're just, you're just going to make up a routine of your mentalist trick, okay? So you're going to say, you can just go straight up and say, your card is a Queen of Hearts, isn't it? Or you can be like, this card is a red card, yeah, and it's a high royal card or somewhere in the middle and just end up with a Queen of Hearts at the end. While you're doing that, all you're doing is you're going to get a pinky break on the top card by using your thumb. You're going to push off like this and pull back. While that's happening, you just got a break on the card. So from here, push, pull. There is a pinky break and you're going to place their king of hearts on the top. So you should have a break on the top two cards like so. Once you've done that, you're going to make it seem like you're going to be moving on to the king of diamonds by using a misdirection. You're going to point to the king of diamonds and all you're doing is that after you point, your hand comes back, do a double undercut, where that means um, there should be their, car their card should be at the very bottom. There we go. And the king should be right on the top like so. Okay, if you need to watch that again, feel free to do so. Now, once that happens, you're going to tell them that King of Diamonds is telling you where their card is. And all you're going to do is you're going to tell them that it's somewhere in the middle, like 26th position, 28th, somewhere between 22 and 30 is fine. So you're going to place this card on the top and you're going to say, your card is somewhere in the middle, like 28th position, and that's what my card is telling me. And as soon as you do that, you're going to get ready for a Charlier cut by just holding it like this and do a Charlier cut. And all you're doing is that at the end of the Charlier cut, you're going to 
do a risk kill kind of move and drop the packet and make it seem like you just cut to a queen of hearts again so you're going to say your card is somewhere in the middle maybe like 26 position like right here and then you're just going to do this see again one last time this is probably the hardest move you'll encounter in this trick just like that so charlie a cut finished by a drop of the packet like this to your right hand and now what you've just done is you've actually sandwiched their card between the two red queen kings like so. So what you're going to do is you're going to show them that you found the queen of hearts and say, actually, it's not me who found the card. And you're going to bring this packet under the queen of hearts like this and close them up. And you're going to spread them up and say, it's actually the king of hearts or the two kings who found your card. And you're going to bring it out like this and show that the two kings has actually sandwiched the queen of hearts. Now, thank you so much for watching the video to the end. I know it's a long video, it's a, but it's a really good routine that if you get this down, you're going to be amazing a lot of people. And also, I own a YouTube channel. It's called The Fifth Jago Five, surprisingly. And if you want to and if you like this kind of video, please subscribe to my channel as well. So again, thanks for watching to the end, and I'll see you in different videos. She's a literal vampire, belly goblin, hobbling, bouncing after your mama. Right, let's go.